Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. Once again, checking out all the different races and factions from Game 1 and Game 2, which might be missing some units, some heroes, lord choices and legendary characters. This is obviously because we are getting closer and closer to Warhammer 3 and eventually we're going to start looking towards cross-game DLC, or at least I do hope that Creative Assembly had that planned considering the size of the map. And many races from Game 1 and Game 2 are still missing quite a decent amount of things. So today we're going to look at the Empire, a race which was from the very beginning of Warhammer 1 and really is lacking on a lot of legendary characters and a decent amount of lord choices too. So without further ado, let's not waste any more time now and let's jump in. So we're going to start off with the generic lord choices as really we're not missing much. Well, we kind of are as we're missing eight that kind of fall into one. These are of course the battle wizard lords. The empire makes heavy use of magic, hence why there is a college dedicated to them and we currently don't have access to any lords which generic lords, not legendary lords, that have access to any form of the eight battle magics. These are of course the Lore of Fire, the Lore of Heavens, the Lore of Metal, the Lore of Beasts, the Lore of Life, the Lore of Light, the Lore of Death, and the Lore of Shadow. We have a lot of them in hero form, we're just missing something but we'll talk about that in a bit, but we're missing all of them in the Lord option, which is disappointing as a lot of people do like magic and it is so heavily embedded into Imperial lore. Other laws of magic and other types of magic can be found within the Empire, but the eight main battle laws are always the most common. It's very strange that we still don't have these, considering that the Empire have received reworks and DLC in Warhammer 2, but I guess they were waiting for Warhammer 3 because magic will be more needed. I mean, all they have to do is really give some minor reskins to the hero versions, and that's pretty much it. We're not really expecting much, as... They kind of all kind of had a uniform look. It's eight generic lord choices. They might just go with a generic battle wizard lord who will be able to then pick from that. But the thing about the Colleges of Magic and the miniatures is that they all had their specific look. And it would be a shame if that was lost. Second, a very possible one which we're pretty much expecting is the Archpriest of Ulrich, which in all fairness is just an Ulrichian version of the Arch Lecter. This would presumably have its own skills and its own battle magic in the sense, battle prayers and all that, but I'm imagining that it would be under the Arch Lecter section where you could just pick if it's going to be Ulrichian or if it's going to be Sigmarite. I mean, that would just be the easier sense. This is of course if we get a Midland themed DLC with Boris Todbringer or Ulrich and so on, but we don't know just yet. We know Boris Todbringer will come, but he could very much be an FLC. However, I'm very much hoping that they'll go into the Storm of Chaos and get those units from way back in the day, as it would add in some variety and some kind of needed units for the Empire as a whole. But with that, we can move on directly onto the generic missing hero choices, and the first being the Warrior Priest of Auric. I'd say it doesn't need a lot of explaining, as it would just be the generic hero version of the generic Lord version we just spoke about. It would just have its own battle laws, it would have its own skin, and so on, and it would just be focused around buffing up those Ulrichian units that we're expecting, and just the general stuff, there's nothing really more to explain. Next is something that everyone's pretty much been waiting for, considering that we're like, what, five years into the series and we still don't have one? An Empire Gold Wizard, just a generic hero choice with the lore of metal. It's pretty strange that despite all the calls for it, we've not received it just yet, and we have this seven other laws of magic already for the Empire, it's just something that people want because the lore of metal is quite cool and a lot of people do enjoy it. Obviously, it's the whole meme with Balthasar Gelt too. It's just, again, strange that we have seven but not the eighth and final one. I believe the other laws of magic have been given to us mostly through FLC too, so it's like... Well, any day now? <laughs> but now we can move on to more unique generic heroes, with the first being the Grand Master. It's weird, I honestly recall these being a Lord choice, but having checked out the Empire book, they were actually a hero choice. So the Grand Masters are leaders of the Knightly Orders within the Empire, which right now we don't really have a lot of them, but it's not really needed as they were more of a generic hero. What they did is they buffed up the capabilities of Knightly Order units or Demogriff Knights, so essentially they're a cavalry focused character which would be kind of cool as it would be nice to differentiate all the different hero choices, give these a focus on buffing up all the different cavalry units as there's a fair amount in the Empire and it would just be kind of thematic. Now 
It would be nice if they had different helmets depending on the faction. So say, for example, playing as Reichland, they'll have the Reichsguard helmet. If we get a playable Midland, then it would be cool if it had the Knights of the White Wolf helmet and so on. I think that's probably a bit too much to ask for, but hey, I guess just putting it out there. But now we can move on to the final unique hero choice, which is the Master Engineer, which, yeah, is just like the Engineer characters of the Dwarfs, but for the Empire, and they were a bit more specialized. They were able to even have a mechanical horse, which was pretty cool. It was kind of out there, especially when you were painting up Empire armies, that one character always was so drastically different. But it was kind of awesome, and hey, rule of cool as always. Now, what made them special is just like the engineers of the dwarves. You'd buff up ranged unit capabilities, even that of uh, artillery and so on. So, yeah, I mean, why not? Especially for the Empire, which is so heavily focused on stuff like this. Now, the reason why I think we haven't seen this yet is I think that eventually we'll see a Tamukon DLC, which will have Elsef and so on, and it will take us to Null, which is so heavily focused on gunpowder that a Master Engineer kind of makes sense. But again, they're just really cool. Like, if Creative Assembly missed this one out, it's going to be very disappointing. I'd say that's pretty much it. There is the Seneschal of the White Wolf, but keep in mind that it's basically just a reskinned Empire Captain, so I don't really think that it does justify anything in development time and so on, as, yeah, it's just a complete reskin. It's going to do exactly the same thing, more or less, so yeah, it's not needed. So let's move on to the missing units, because there are a few cool ones. Okay, before anything, let's talk about Knightly Orders. I doubt that we're going to get too many more, barring possibly Knights of the White Wolf, because eventually we will likely get a Midland DLC. We currently have the Knights of the Blazing Sun, we obviously have the Reichsguard, the Empire Knights, and the Demigriff Knights. The Empire Knights themselves are pretty much the generic, we are anything that you want us to be, in a sense. There were also two which were actually Regiments of Renown, I believe, Knights of the Everlasting Light and the Stubborn Balls, but I don't think that we'll be seeing any extra ones, just pretty much the Midland ones with the Great Weapons. Though it would be cool in the future if they did add the possibility, like a kind of make your knightly order type of thing. I mean, that would be awesome, but I very much doubt it. I've just realized I forgot about the Knights of Moor, which are also a Regiment of Renown, which is a shame as eventually if we saw Sylvian Mortal Levies and so on, it would be cool to see these added to the Empires and FLC updates. Next we can move on to one of the most requested units for a long, long time now, the Celestial Hurricaneum. This is an arcane battle altar, which was kind of cool on the tabletop, I must admit. They increased your Winds of Magic reserve, they were able to increase your units' uh, capabilities in melee combat, they were just kind of fun and had their own bounce spells and so on. It's kind of like having a wizard but without having a wizard. And yeah, they just kind of cool factor too. The fact is that it's very strange that we still haven't seen one, since the base kit at least is part of the Luminarch of Hish, so yeah. I mean, it won't be a long time now, I think they'll have to add it in, because this is kind of themed to be anti-demon and so on, and I mean, yeah, you know, we're gonna be fighting a lot of demons in Warhammer 3, so I imagine that this will be added in eventually. Whether this comes in as a DLC or as an FLC, we'll never know, I guess, until it happens. But who doesn't want a war machine? Well, altar, chariots, yeah. Alter Chariot, War Machine, it kind of fits in all three. With the expertise of the Celestial Order, it would kind of be like having your own version of, say, like a Mortis Engine, obviously drastically different as it would have its own bounce spells and so on, but you get what I mean, it would just be kind of cool. That's pretty much it when it comes to the 8th edition army book, however, as the Empire is very much complete when you compare it to the 8th edition book, which is the main standard for the Total War series. However, there are a few other units that we can look towards, like for example the Null Ironsides. Many people have been requesting this for a while as, well, they're just kind of cool. They're just better handgunners, and I guess that we likely get some Hotchland Long Rifle units too, because it kind of fits with the theme. Maybe in a Tamukon DLC, just again, because that's where they kind of featured a lot. It would be a lot of gunpowder units for the Empire, that's for sure. But then again, you know, it's Faith Steel and Gunpowder, so why not? It would just be kind of more useful. The Iron Sides themselves would probably be like a longer range handgunner with a lot more damage, and the Hotchin Long Rifles would be more like the Scavenger Zales, as they're more snipers. Maybe that would just stay with the Imperial Engineer, though, as to give him something more unique to be able to snipe out heroes and so on from a very large distance. Next we have the Chuchadan Guard, which are kind of like Knights of the White Wolf, but on foot. Which, yeah, I mean, it kind of gives you that thing. They are hammer units. Usually, I believe they were two-handed? Yeah, yeah, they were two-handed. Sorry, it's been a while since I've actually looked at those miniatures because... 
they don't really come into my armies a lot. But yeah, great weapon infantry with just hard hitting, loads of heavy armor. They were just there to do a lot of damage. You could expect them to be very good at, say, for example, smashing down Chaos Warriors, Chosen, and all those types of things. Since we know that Warhammer 3 is having a quite heavy infantry focus with the demons, it's probably safe to say that infantry should be a bit more viable, at least I very much hope so, so these would fit in rather nicely. Next we'll move to the Hunting Hounds, because this was a very, very unique unit in the army list. This is obviously from Storm of Chaos for Midland, as, well yeah, they're hunting dogs. Like, yeah, it's been a while since we've seen proper animals in stuff that wasn't really the Wood Elves. So it would be kind of cool because, you know, hunting hounds are awesome. A lot of people would have already been used to them if they played games like Rome Tilt War and so on. And, well, it's just hunting hounds. It would just be cool to have something different. Hopefully it's not just a reskinned wolf because they've reskinned that wolf model so many times now. Like, just give us something like a Mastiff or something because that would be just kind of cool. But that's pretty much it. There are a few other things that were included in this list, like the Wolfkin and the Warriors of Ulrich, but those were just pretty much just reskinned units. Nothing really too special. I don't think that Wolfkin would be turned into something like more bestial or something, but it does very much depend. It could be very possible that they'll want to introduce that, though I think they'll want to keep it neutral. Like the God do make sense, the Whites of the White Wolf makes sense, the Hunting Hands make sense. But Warriors of Ulrich are literally just Empire State troops, just painted blue and white and then with a different head. As the majority of the Storm of Chaos stuff was kit bashes, there were not that many official models that came out around this time. So, you never know though, I could be wrong, this is just my interpretation of things, plus it makes more sense if they just go with a few units from here and then a few other missing units from other supplements and the campaign books and stuff like that, just to finally finish up the roster. The last unit I want to talk about is the Marienburg landship, and yeah, Marienburg isn't part of the Empire anymore, and it's just a very weird thing, but they were usable in the Empire during the whole Tamilkan campaign, which once again, you know, could happen, it kind of leads to it. It's just pretty cool, I mean, you can see it, it's a steam tank, but a ship. It's really big, it's really cool, rule of cool, again, very, very popular. These were just really awesome, and they're impressive, they're very, very impressive. I'd like to see these being done in a very special sense, like a mechanic where you get them on loan from Marienburg, where you purchase them directly. Maybe that would be kind of cool. Obviously that means that they would be limited, so you wouldn't be able to spam them and make a complete doom stack, but I mean, you know, it just would be nice. It's kind of like the whole Dreadsaurian thing. I've been painting up mine recently, and I really, really like the model, so it would just be really nice to be able to use it here. We've seen some very good mods, but I know a lot of people want one officially, and I think that that would work out really well, unless like Marienburg ends up joining like the Southern Realms DLC if we ever get one. You know, a Dogs of War type of thing, which would make sense for Marienburg. But it would just be kind of cool to have them with the Empire too. But we finished looking at all the possible missing units, and now it's time to look at legendary characters, and uh, there are a lot, so this video might be longer than expected. We'll start off with stuff in the 8th edition army book, so Kurt Helborg at the very beginning, the Reichs Marshal of the Empire, he is the military commander of Karl Franz's armies, and a very close friend. Rumored to be one of the best swordsmen, if not the best swordsman in the old world, he's old, but many people say that he still fights with the tenacity of a man in his young 20s. Kurt has always been a rather popular character and the fact that we don't have him yet as a legendary hero is kind of weird, especially as now that his famed Solund Runefang falls under that of Balthazar Gelt. But let's not talk about the Solon thing because that's an argument for another day. Instead, it's just one of these characters that many people have been wanting for a while, and especially since the legendary heroes that have been implemented have been done so well, why haven't we seen this character just yet? I doubt Karl Franz will be getting any dedicated DLC and so on, but still, a character pack, this is why I keep saying character packs would be a good idea, where they could sell us just characters, no units, because... These characters deserve to be in-game. The same thing would go towards Ludwig Schwarzhelm, the Emperor's Champion, another old friend, one more akin to a mentor, if anything, and, well, he is the Emperor's personal standard bearer, which, you know, has been a bit of a drama because they say that it's too difficult to do banners and then people mod in banners better than they implement them, it's... yeah. 
All I'm saying, Creative Assembly, if people can do banners, if modders can do banners, so can you. Either way, let's go back to the character. He's pretty cool, he's got a very impressive banner, he needs that banner in-game if he gets implemented. He's a battle standard bearer, he's there to provide buffs and so on, but also be a very powerful melee hero. He had pretty good stats, and just one of those characters that you wanted in your army, if possible. Especially since he was there to be able to take damage for Carl Franz and so on. It's just one of those theme stuff. But he was a cool character, and he was just cool. Again, a possible legendary hero choice, because, well, yeah, you know, legendary heroes would be nice. There's a point where too many legendary lords might be a bit of an issue, but legendary heroes, we've barely had any through the series so far, so the more the better at this point. Next we have Marius Lightdorf, the Elector Count of Aveland, who's technically dead at this point, but, you know, Creative Assembly and lore doesn't really matter, and he should really be alive for this because he was still playable in 8th edition. So this character, I've said before, would be a perfect FLC Lord because, well, first up, he's absolutely insane, and I mean absolutely insane. Think Lufa Harkin, but human. Secondly, he just looks really, really cool, and, well, he doesn't have any units attached to him, he's just known as the Mad Count, and it would just be kind of nice to have him because eventually we're going to start looking towards all the other different elect accounts and it would be cool to have as many of them as possible granted that would be a lot but if they're going to make any one playable it should be one that had a model at the very least with that being said considering he's insane like that's why a lot of people like lufa he would be quite a popular character flc would be great dlc not so much Lufa Huss is also another character which was in the 8th edition army book, another battle pope in a sense. Well, he was a priest of Sigmar, a warrior priest to be in fact. It's just, I don't know how they could implement him, because anything that was really popular with him involved Belakor, and I don't really see him being a legendary lord. Maybe a legendary hero, maybe a FLC 1-2 or something from a character pack, but other than that, I really don't know how they could justify adding him in. If you guys think... Uh, a certain way, let me know, but I've really tried to mull this over for quite a long time. Alright, let's get into the topic of elect accounts as we already spoken about Marius and we know Boris is going to come eventually so there's really no point putting him here but let's just say for those who might not be aware, Creative Assembly did confirm that Boris Toddbringer, the elect account of Midland, will eventually get his day. So whether that's DLC, FLC or Total War Access, we'll not know until it eventually happens I guess. But there are a lot, and I mean a lot of elect accounts, as you may be aware, any active province within the Empire barring Solund, which is still not a thing by the way, all those active provinces have elect accounts, and those are all leaders, some of them have miniatures and so on, so I don't know, I don't know if we'll ever see them all, I would love to, don't get me wrong, while that might be a lot of characters, they were established in law to be quite different from each other, and there's a lot of different cultures with the Empire which is not really represented in game at all. Though I must state very very clearly this is not the fault of Creative Assembly, this is more of a Games Workshop problem because they never really represented it in the tabletop either. I'd say that all these remaining elect accounts could be added in through the form of character packs, and I've been saying that a lot this video video because it's just what makes sense for all the different characters that are missing as it's very hard to justify a lot of DLC for the Empire when they're practically almost done. But everyone has their own favorite elect account, especially long-standing Empire players, so it would be kind of cool to have them there. And obviously Creative Assembly could get a little bit creative with some of them that never had an official model but might have had like one or two pieces of art. I'm one of those guys that just wants everything in Total War Warhammer, the longer that we get more content, the longer the game lasts and so on, so that'd be cool. The Empire is definitely a way to do that among some other races, but the Empire is probably like number one. Next we can talk about the R Ulrich, which is essentially the Ulrichian version of Volkmar the Grim. There's a lot of these types of things happening a lot in the lore, because keep in mind that the Ulrichians at certain points almost are the same in number as the Sigmarites. If anything, he will be a perfect legendary character, whether lord or hero. I'd think that he'd be introduced as a legendary hero and Boris being the legendary lord, but he could also be a lord too, and having two different starts in Middenheim, it could be possible. I mean, if we get a Minenheim themed DLC, we're not definitely going to pay for Boris because he's been in game since game one, so, you know. Unless they do it something differently where it's not Legendary Lord against Legendary Lord and it's rather a Legendary Hero, then making Boris that... 
I don't know. It's one of these weird things. I wonder what Creative Assembly actually going to do about this as it is a very odd thing, but I guess we're going to have to wait and see. I think he'll be a great legendary hero, but I can see people saying legendary lord. It's one of those things, really. Next we can talk about Elseth and Mr. Theodore Bruckner. Both of these characters were introduced in the Throne of Chaos campaign, the one featuring Tamilcon, and they were kind of like the mainstay as the Elector Count of Wissenland was actually trying to become independent. Yeah, it's a weird thing. She was trying to secede her capital and have an extra state made, so the rest of Wissenland would have been stuck to deal with itself. Yeah, she's not great. So Elseth was more of a character that was more up front and in the limelight a lot. I mean, she kind of was hinted to be a vampire, but there are some vampires living in within the Empire and all that, so it's kind of common. This was more of a character which held a position of power, but was more self-serving, yet would come to the defense as obviously anything that would disrupt anything in Wissenland would disrupt her plans and so on and so forth. Theodore Bruckner, on the other hand, is just a really powerful champion with a massive demigriff. Yep, that's a demigriff. I know it looks very strange because it was a model that was released and looks nothing like the others. Maybe magical powers and so on? Either way, both characters are heavily tied together in the story, and if we get a Tamukon DLC, well, Elseth seems to be the legendary lord choice, obviously, and Bruckner would be a great legendary hero. I mean, it kind of writes itself. The book itself is fantastic, by the way. If you've not read it, I'm pretty sure you can find something online to be able to read the story. It's one of those things where some parts of the story make no sense, like they kind of confused Cathay and Nippon for a while, but other things, like more specifically the battles and so on, are really, really good. She She's a great character, she rides atop of a Carmine Dragon, she's a master of the lore of death, so it kind of brings in another caster legendary lord, and I mean, it's just kind of cool. And finally, at the end of the list of the legendary characters, we have Volton, chosen of Sigmar. Some people think he's Sigmar reincarnated and so on. It's a very odd story, as he was kind of brought in to be the biggest of Mary Sue's and then killed off. It's, um... Uh, yeah, I don't know what they had plans with Volton. Either way, the character was popular enough to have three different models brought in in the same edition, and it was used again during the end times, I believe. And, I mean, he's cool. He's cool, he's got interesting lore. Kinda like I said, Mary Sue lore, because he's a son of a blacksmith, and then beats down the Beastmen invaders and so on, and that makes him the son of Sigma or Sigma reincarnated, and... Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. It's one of those times where Warhammer Fantasy lore was just like, well, who's writing this, you know? But still, a lot of people quite like him, and you know he does have a really cool model and so on. I think he'd probably come as a Legendary Lord or a Legendary Hero, but we don't know exactly what Creative Assembly are doing with their storyline. It's one moment is, yeah, it's 8th edition, then they start bringing End Time stuff in, but no, they're not doing End Times, despite a lot of End Time stuff coming in. Then, of course, they do stuff that's more linked up to the uh, Storm of Chaos, but then it's not Storm of Chaos because, no, we're staying on the 8th edition thing. I just wish they'd be a bit more clear, as this would be easier with characters like this, which are kind of like in multiple timelines and very much the same. In a personal opinion, I'd just say he's a legendary hero. I think he'd be very cool to be a legendary hero. Maybe a character, if they even implement something like you could make a legendary hero into a legendary lord by some prerequisites for special characters? I don't know. Does that sound alright? I don't know, Creative Assembly are kind of weird with these things, but I wouldn't say that it's out of the realm of possibilities. Now, you think we're done, but we're not. We have one more topic. Halflings. Yeah, you probably thought I didn't think of halflings throughout the whole video, and yeah, I did. I honestly did, because I'm painting up some halflings right now. Anyways, well, I was like a few minutes ago, but you know what I mean, power of editing. So halflings are very much requested, and a lot of people might think why, because you know, halflings don't sound so powerful and so on, but the tabletop fans love them, especially the RPG fans and so on. They had armies essentially in the tabletop, they had special units, archers, you know, the cockerel riders and so on, the Kathleen soup tank, they had really really cool things, and they do have a vote on who becomes emperor. They are part of the empire, the grand majority of halflings are are actually Imperial. Obviously there's some other halflings which go to Marienburg and other nations, but it's always been said that the largest amounts of halflings throughout the whole Warhammer Fantasy world can be found within the Empire, more specifically the Moot. So it's kind of weird that we haven't really seen anything. Obviously there's been hints and so on, but like, 
It would be nice if we had halfling units. Maybe a halfling legendary lord or a legendary hero would be nice. Obviously, his may is the uh, elect account there, but I don't know. It would be cool. That's just mainly it. Creative Assembly have this opportunity to introduce a sub race, sub faction type of thing where maybe if you control the moot, you would be able to recruit halfling units in your global recruitment and obviously local recruitment there. Or you could even play as a halfling faction, which might be limited to halflings, kind of like Marcus Wolfhart in a sense, where you would get them as reinforcements. If you're playing as halflings, you would get Imperials as reinforcements, I mean. That might be kind of fun. It would be a difficult thing, but hey, you know, these types of things are always interesting. There's so many opportunities they can go for here, and they can go full ham with different mechanics and so on. The main thing is halflings are very, very popular. Like, I'm not even going to be funny, but I think more people were interested in, like, the possibility of the Hobgoblin Carnate than, say, Nippon, which confuses me, but hey, people like the little guy, and it kind of makes sense. Halflings were always popular because of just general halfling stuff. They were featured in the Dogs of War and so on, and it would just be cool. That's the main thing. Sometimes you don't really need to justify anything, it's just cool factor. And Creative Assembly have been adding in a lot of stuff because of cool factor, like the Dread Saurian and so on. So, I mean, yeah, it's jokey and so on, but it's Warhammer. Warhammer is a joke. Like, it's not supposed to be taken seriously. It's, it's a game about toys that we paint and move around on the table, you know? And obviously now we play in video games and so on, but it's the same thing. It's that same universe that wasn't written really well. Let's just be honest about that. It does have very good lore in some places, but the majority of it is just satire. It's just there to have fun with. And Halflings kind of represent that, and it would be kind of cool. Plus, they did have an official army list at one point, which we're not going to go over, or else this video is going to be like 40 minutes long, but it was kind of like animals, um, you know, chefs and so on. If you've played the OVN Lost Factions mod, that's pretty much it. And hey, that's kind of fun. And everyone would love to see official halflings wondering how they would be voiced and so on. Because we really haven't had too much of lore to go around them with that. We know about their holidays and so on. Believe me, there is actually a decent amount of lore when it comes to halflings. I mean, the perfect way to introduce them, at least in my opinion, would be an eventual Dogs of War DLC where we would have that and then the FLC attached to that would be the halflings for the Empire. I know a lot of people would be like, wait, what? But think about it, with a race pack for Dogs of War, because technically that would be a race pack, that would be, what, four Legendary Lords, and then one Halfling, with a few reskinned Halflings to be the rest of the army and so on, and that's pretty much it. Didn't expect to go on that long of a rant for Halflings, in all honesty. But that's pretty much it when it comes to everything for the Empire, I do believe. I might have missed something, and if I have, let me know in the comments below. But I think I've covered everything. I do apologize if I sound like I'm, like, rushing through stuff. Believe me, I'm not. I'm just trying to make sure I get some videos done in advance as I am hopefully going to have some surgery soon. So obviously I want to have my content as usual coming out on the days that I might not be at the computer. But with all that being said, let me know your thoughts regarding the Empire. I know that they're very popular and I know that a lot of people want more. I personally want them to introduce some new mechanics, psychologies like colleges of magic or something, you know, just to give it a little bit more flavor because they are feeling a little bare when compared to Warhammer 3 stuff as far as we've seen. I've been working on those types of scripts for a while, but that's going to have to be a little bit later. I think right now the focus should be all the missing stuff before we start looking towards DLC. I will probably start doing that stuff after Warhammer Phrase launch as to not like jump too much into stuff. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let's start a bit of a discussion. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby based products, not just Warhammer, for 10 to 25% off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code, which is also in the description, supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to our higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. 
And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.